Hello everybody, this is my mum. Hi. <laughs> what would you like them to call you? Mandy. Okay, so this is this is Mama Magpie, Mandy. What's Mama Magpie, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and we started a conversation in the coffee shop the other day about Omegaverse. And my mother obviously has no idea what Omegaverse is. So I thought I would save that topic of discussion for you guys to also enjoy the torment on. Okay, uh, so where to begin? Omegaverse is kind of like a separate universe to no shit. the main universe. <laughs> like the multiverse. Like the multiverse, yes, exactly. She's a nerd, this makes things so much easier. It is a society in which everyone has a secondary gender. So you have the usual male, female, non-binary mm -hmm. kind of things, but then outside of that, there is your secondary gender, which would be alpha, beta, or omega. Okay. Um, and then it runs on a hierarchy, usually depending on what fic, but most of the time, anyone who is an alpha is superior. They are, you know, the typical kind of thing. They have superior strength, superior looks. Um, a lot of it is in superior intelligence as well in some cases. And there's not many alphas. Like, they are like the top rungs of society, the CEOs, etc. Like in D&D, &D, when you roll a really good character and you've got excellent charisma and all the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, most of, Think of it more along the lines of the patriarchy. Oh. And... <laughs> not so good, not so good <laughs> Yeah. We don't like the patriarchy. It does depend on the, on the fic. Um, yeah. But think of it like they just ha have the amount of privilege, they get loads of benefits, loads of stuff like that. Mm. Again, with all the strength roles and stuff, they have superior things in that. So yeah, they do in that sense. Um, then you have betas, which are like 70% of society. They don't really have much of a difference. I think they're just like average people. And then you have omegas, and they are the considered usually the lower level of society, depending on which fic you read. Um, but the omegas are basically, um, they're usually really pretty. They're usually really attractive because they're to draw in mates. Um, they can get pregnant regardless of their first gender. So even if, if they're male, they have a womb in their ass <laughs> so that they can give birth nice and equal from yeah, their butt i say equal rights yeah, yeah, men should be able to have babies too if men had babies they wouldn't be here oh, sorry sorry <laughs> if men had babies there would be better, better pain relief this is true <laughs> actually yeah basically the omegas are usually seen as lesser if you think of it as a capitalist society because omegas get pregnant very easily but they also go through something called heat which is like a mating season mm -hmm. um now when betas betas don't really have them but alphas get ruts which is the desire to breed okay and omegas get heats which is the desire to be bred yeah um when an alpha or an omega goes into one of these they produce pheromones mm -hmm. that attract nearby mates so like if a nature an, yeah so if an alpha went into a rut um other alphas would be probably disgusted by the smell you know it'd be like gross but omegas it would trigger their heat to make them ready for the alpha but that also means the opposite is true if an omega goes into heat then alphas that are nearby will enter their ruts and want to mate the omega so it's, it can be very very non-conny like non-consensual mm. in that kind of world depending on how people write it um so a lot of it, because of that, a lot of workplaces don't like keeping omegas because they have to have like a separate floor for them, you know, separate things to keep them away from the higher ups, especially like omega, um, the alpha like bosses and things mm. like that, because if anything happens, it could lead to a lawsuit and all this other stuff um, and unplanned pregnancies. But omegas are also kind of revered in some ways because while betas can get pregnant and have kids and stuff, omegas are the only ones who can give birth to alphas. Mm. So there's okay. no guarantee it'll be an alpha. No, it could no. be anything, but only omegas can give birth to alphas. Um, and then that brings us on to the more sexual side of things, which is uh, the knotting and slick. And <laughs> these are words I don't know what they mean. I'm intrigued. I want to hear what you think knotting is. Oh God, don't embarrass me. What if I get it completely wrong? It's fine. Knotting. But I'm also using this as an example for people who don't know what Omega Verse is. Knotting? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Alphas not. Alphas have not. Alphas help. Knot. <laughs> tying a knot. It's to do with their penises. penises. They have very long penises which they can tie in a knot. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I keep in mind I've never drawn a penis for in recent years. Um, so knotting is, if you imagine, 
this is pee pee and this is that's pretty good balls. yeah that okay so that's mr mushroom yeah he's very happy if you imagine that's a normal pee pee mm -hmm. um so an alpha i'm gonna go in with the red so you know the thing would have a knot around here a knot a knot so this is when they finish mm -hmm. uh they could not where this bit expands and blocks the semen from exiting the thing you know like when dogs tie together when they oh, yeah i have to yeah. wonder why that happens so it's to encourage cancer once, pregnancy and i was like what on earth is going on with those dogs this part of the pp if i can get it this part of the pp it sort of expands um and bulges out when they finish and ties them together for a bit to ensure that they get inseminated. They get inseminated. Fair enough. Clever um, trick. It's a very clever trick. Yeah. I imagine it hurts. Because mm. it's that well, those dogs were like... yelping a bit. So... <laughs> that is what they have. So that's um, nothing, right? Yeah, that's nothing. So educated. <laughs> you're learning. <laughs> yeah, you taught me to walk. I taught you about nothing. <laughs> Equivalent exchange. Beta, I imagine, wouldn't be able to take it as well. Mm -hmm. But Omega's bodies are adapted to be able to take it, especially mm -hmm. if they're in heat. They can easily take a knot. Um, um, so slick is like you know, women produce slick. Okay. And then Omega's, regardless of gender, also produce slick from yeah. the desired mating hole. Right. Which is basically well, that a, makes sense. a slippery lubricant yeah. substance. Yeah. In slippery order. and wet. Yes, that is what omegas produce, and that allows easy, <laughs> easy penetration. Easy penetration. We don't want to get demonetized. What? So just is it sort of mainly erotic fan fiction then? Yeah, usually but like the whole universe is set up with how you just described it. Yeah, so it's, it's all about erotic fan fiction. Yeah, it, is, it stemmed from working that. out fantasies, that kind of thing. Yeah, like it's a nice kind of thing to just sort of. Uh, the reason I personally like Omega Verse Fix is because of the gender neutralness of who can get pregnant, and yeah. it's it's not like it's very trans friendly. Yeah. In that sense, yeah. I I don't know. But I reckon it probably came from furries because of like the um the animalistic sense of things. And then over time, everyone has added to it and it's become this thing that we all collectively know and understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's not It's a safe place. Isn't it? it is, it is. Okay, marking is another one. So marking, marking. Like cats marking. Yeah. So every Alpha and Omega <laughs> have um scent glands on their oh, neck, okay. right? And that's where the smell is produced from. Mm -hmm. Um Oh god, there's so much I forgot. So I'm glad I looked it up. Um, so marking would be where an alpha bites the scent gland, and then it would be like mm. that omega is mine. <laughs> the reason I wanted to explain this to mom, I'm just gonna call you out real quick, is I grew up with my mom being like, oh werewolves. Oh god, Ooh, yes. Vampires. Yes. And pirates. Bite my neck, please. Sorry. And pirates. <laughs> yes. Wonder where I got it from. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be too Nick Nebling. So that is what that is. It'd be like sinking the teeth into it, it leaves a mark and it like some then their mark will appear and other yeah. alphas will bite. Yeah. But the thing is like if it depends on the thick, but a lot of times if an alpha bites an omega, that's for life. Oh, that's so, sweet. Yeah. Like wolves. But it also oh. gets used very that's obviously good. it's very bad for omegas that are out there and they just get assaulted by an alpha. Because then yeah, if they get, because no. like, they have the desire to bite and then they're tied to this one So alpha. it can be a good or a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, depending on how it's written. A lot of the time it's done so really sweet. If the neck's been bitten and they have the mark, yeah. does that mean all of the alphas will never go near them um, again? They, they or might, other people but who it's, may? it's a case of um, they'd only be able to have all of the experiences with that one alpha as opposed to other alphas. So their heat would only really affect their alpha. It so wouldn't would affect it, would they only anymore. go into... He, if their alpha was near then? Um, it depends on the fic. Um, okay. So sometimes it's like if their alpha is near, sometimes it's a case of they their things sync up. Or sometimes it's a case of if they go into heat, other alphas, the pheromones are weakened and only their alpha can fix their heat. Like by just f for a long So if someone's been assaulted and they yeah. don't see them again. Yeah. Then they, then they end up in this space of being incredibly, like, broken. And, like a liminal space yeah. where they're not really one thing or another. Yeah, and they get, like, lost and it's really oh. angsty. And, like, they'll be, like... Because there are times when ones will mate um, in some very angsty fix. And one of them won't want the Omega, so they'll break the tie. And if they sever the tie, then they both end up sort of, like, lost. And they don't really know... What, mm. Like, it hurts a lot, mm. especially, like, if one dies... 
mm-hmm. then it's like it's like heartbreaking and then when it comes to like an omega and heat they will do things like nesting which is really really cute and i believe it's probably stems from like the autistic need to nest because mm-hmm. a lot of us have that need mm-hmm. um where they all surround themselves with things that smell like their alpha and they will just like make a nice cozy little nest and safe space to be bred and like raised in do you know what i mean yeah and that's just reminds me of sometimes when you know you're with someone you really like them and you start to wear their shirt yeah you? and you put their hoodie you on and you smell it they smell that aftershave or whatever yeah. <laughs> or gen- and just general pheromones exactly and it's that yeah, yeah. Um, but they all like usually do that when they feel like heat coming on you can sort of like notice because mm. they're starting to build a nest and they don't want anyone else in the nest like it's a thing and um a lot of times if people want to do like polyamory fix they will have people forming packs where like there might be like two omegas two alphas for example they are separate couples that How are marked that work, well the separate couples that are marked but they are packs so they get used to being around each other they enjoy each other's sense so they will help take care of each other if one of them's away right so it's like a big shared well, love does, thing how does the mating thing work can they mate with each other they still was there yeah they can part? still mate with each other but usually no i mean does he mate with the other per- if they're polyamorous yeah. they mate with everyone in their pack yeah they can mate with anyone in their pack it obviously oh, yeah. depends on the pack marked? rules yeah it yeah, would depend okay. on the pack rules, but again, the marked thing is only in some fix. Right. So okay, it's yeah. only exclusive yeah, yeah, yeah. in some fix. Yeah. In other fix, it might not be. I know polyamorous people, so... Yeah, you know, it would basically be like that. So if, if imagine if you had your love, and you were part of a pack with these other people, but your love was away on business, mm-hmm. and then you went into heat, your pack would I, would take care of you. Sometimes that might just be a case of the other omegas will nest with you and keep you safe while yeah. it's happening. Yeah. Other times it might be another alpha takes care <coughs> of you. Excuse me. But a lot of times, the ones I read, it will be the omegas will take care of each other and then um, try and get the other partner back because it is the mated bond thing because people yeah. really like that. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating. Enjoying this. So catching. Catching is a word for impregnation, basically when it's been it's caught, like the semen is taken mm. kind of thing claws not everyone has claws but that's self-explanatory i think that is everything so (laughs) so with all you have now don't apologize we're obsession don't like this is the kind of conversations we have (laughs) it's fine i just remember the the bit in um, that really really funny film that sort of sent up as a horror movie and he goes werewolves and somebody goes they're wolf they're castle Now that you know about yeah. Omegaverse, do you think you would ever read anything on it? Yeah, I love the idea of the Omegas all sort of nesting and yeah. looking after each other. I will have to get you to read Shark Bait at some point. <laughs> <laughs> this video is sponsored by me. <laughs> the Shark Bait, I mean. This video is sponsored by Shark Bait. Go play it. It's great. Let me know if you want me to film my mum playing Shark Lots Bait. Lots of hot male sharks for you to lust over. But yes, thank you very much for agreeing to let me talk to you about mushrooms and then nothing. And nothing. 